The next thing to talk about are functions. Functions are pretty much just equations. They just have a little bit different way of presenting themselves. So a function generally is going to say f of x instead of y is equal to some number of x. So let's say f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. That's exactly the same as saying y is equal to 2x plus 1. So if you're the kind of person who looks at a function and goes, uh, I don't know what to do, just make f of x y, and that'll make your life a little bit easier. Now when we're talking about functions, a lot of times we're going to mention domain and range. So domain is basically all the x values that you get. So um, x values. So for instance, in this above equation, f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. The domain is actually anything. So there you can put in whatever x values you want into this equation and you'll get an answer. Now when you're not going to have a demo, de, sorry, domain values, as when you have something like, um, let's say f of x is equal to x plus 1 divided by x. Okay, so x on the bottom here can't be 0 because then you would have 1 divided by 0 and that's undefined. So for the first equation, let's number it, number 1, um, you can have all real values and for the second one, x cannot be equal to 0. Alright, so for range, that's going to be your y values. So, for instance, in the first equation, x can be negative, and therefore y can be negative or positive. So, there's really no limit on the range for y. And on the second one, our range is infinite on the second one because this would graph like this. So, it's going to infinity. Down here, and the same exact thing on this side. And so the range, which is in this direction and also down, is reaching infinity as it goes up, and it's also reaching So here's a function question. What is not in the range of f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 2? Okay, so when you have a range question, a lot of times they're going to look like this. A little simple trick is, generally, the answer will either be A or E. Because when you're looking at a range, it's a range of numbers from small to big. So unless there's something like in the previous problem I showed you guys, where you're dividing by something that makes it undefined, um, it's pretty much going to have to be a small number or a big number to not fit in that range. So if we're looking at our small 1 and our big number 21, we're just trying to figure out what's in the range. So the idea is what's the smallest you could make this and what's the biggest. So in terms of the biggest that I can make this, I can put in whatever number I want. So let's say 101 minus 1 plus 2. Okay, great. So then I'm going to have 102. Okay, what if I put in 201? I'm going to get 202 out of that. So I can get pretty big with this range. So 21 is not the right answer. So let's try to figure out the smallest we can make it. So f of x is equal to, if I put in a negative number here, like let's say negative 1, um, it's going to turn into a positive. So negative 1 minus 1 would be negative 2, but since it's absolute value, it's 2 plus 2 equals 4. Okay, let's see, because that leaves A and B, let's see if we can make it even smaller. So, bigger negatives are actually going to make this a bigger positive answer. So instead, I'm going to put in 0. Alright, so 0 minus 1 plus 2, that's going to give us 3. Okay, so even smaller answer is what we need to get A or B. So if 0 doesn't work and negatives don't work, then a positive must work. Basically, I want to get this absolute value to equal 0. So if I have 1 minus 1 plus 2, then I'm going to get 0 plus 2 and 2. So 2 works, and all these other answers 
are larger, so they're in the range, so A has to be the correct answer. Alright, the next thing to think about when you're thinking about functions are nested functions. So, a lot of you guys have probably seen these before, but probably only a few of you have heard the term nested function. But basically all that is is when you have something like f of g of x. So when you have something like f of g of x, you're going to start from the innermost variable. So you're going to start with x, and then you're going to do g of x, and then you're going to do f of whatever that number might be. So let me go ahead and write a problem for you guys. Okay, so in this problem we've got f of x is equal to 2 times x squared plus 1, and g of x is equal to 27 minus 5x. If x is equal to 5, what is f of g of x? Alright, so since remember we're going to start with our smallest thing, so x, we're going to go ahead and put that into g of x. So we have g of 5, which by the way just means g or y when uh, x is equal to 5. So g5 is equal to 27 minus 5 times 5. So we've got is 27 minus 25 or 2. So we've got g of 5 is equal to 2. And then our next step is to put that into f of that number. So now all we have to do is put an f of 2. So let me go ahead and put that over here. So then we've got f of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 squared plus 1. So we have 2 times 4 plus 1, or 9. So 9 would be our total answer at this point. So just remember with nested functions, they're really not that bad, but you do have to start from the rightmost part, parentheses, and then move your way left. So uh, it's kind of like the opposite way of how you generally would read a book in English. So you start with x and then you work your way to the left.